Hey everyone, Father Mark here. Um, glad to see you today. As you've probably heard, starting this Friday, June 19, Alameda County is allowing for limited religious services to take place. And so here at the Catholic Community of Pleasanton, we're going to give it a try. Many of you have been wanting to come back to church. We want to try to facilitate that as best we can within the limitations that are provided. Let me start by saying this and be very clear about this. The dispensation to attend Mass is still in place. There's no requirement or expectation that anyone come to church. However, if you would like to, we're going to try to have public services. In the meantime, everything we've been doing since quarantine started, we will continue to do. drive through confessions on Saturday afternoon starting at 3, uh, webcast Mass at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning, walk through communion at the St. Elizabeth Seton Vestibule starting at 11.30 on Sunday morning, and of course daily webcast Masses Monday through Friday at 12.10. All that will continue. We're just adding this for a week to see if this works and if we need to adjust it. Based on the guidelines the county and the diocese have given us, we are limited to 100 people in the church maximum. That includes all of the ministers, so obviously less than 100 people coming to church overall. We'll have three Masses on Sundays, 8, 10, and 12, all of them right here at St. Augustine Church for reasons of simply that it's easier to clean this church, there's no fabric pews or seats, and we have a team that will help get us through all three of those Masses. We're going to use a reservation system for people to come to Mass so that we know who's coming and so that we can keep track of that and so that you know whether or not there's going to be space for you when you arrive at the church. You'll receive a flock note that will have a link to a reservation system that Flocknote has created. It's very easy, very simple to use. Uh, when, as soon as you see it, you'll know how to work it, and that will be very, very helpful. Uh, reservations for Mass on Sunday will close Saturday at noon. So what to expect when you come? If you decide that you would like to come to Mass, and you get a reservation, and you would like to come, what will you see, what will you encounter when you get here? I'm going to warn you, it's, it's different than what you've probably experienced before. Um, some people are really struggling with it. I know I'm struggling with it, but this is what we need to do at this time in history if we are to have public worship together. When you arrive, the parking lot behind me, it's not marked yet, but just as we've done in the Seton parking lot for walkthrough communion, every other parking space will be X'd out. Uh, believe it or not, that still leaves us with about 100 open parking spaces. Even if everybody came individually, there'd be a parking space for everyone. Some of our knights will be in the parking lot to guide you and help direct that and keep traffic flowing. One of the concerns around having people in the same place together over a period of time is um, what we're calling high touch surfaces, that many people would be touching the same thing repeatedly. One of those places are the doors and the door handles, the doorknobs. So when you arrive on Sunday, if the doors are closed, please do not grab them. Please do not try to open them. Our team inside is getting ready to let you in. And when the time comes, they will open the doors. So instead, there will be six foot marks, social distance marks around the sidewalks. We ask you to simply get in line and wait until those doors are open for you. Both before and after Mass, the team will open the doors and to close the doors so that a limited number of people are touching the doors. When the teams open the doors for you, you'll then be able to proceed into church. Um, excuse me. Uh, here's the way this is going to work. As you come into the vestibule, you can probably see already on the floors the six-foot marks. You'll come in and you'll wait until you are first, and an usher will greet you, will make sure your name is on the list and then we'll take you to a pew with designated seating, which means you're probably not going to get your seat, the pew you're used to sitting in. <coughs> Excuse me. So we need to get people in, get them in a pew, get them to a far end, and bring the next people in behind them. Families that come together will be able to sit together. Don't worry about that. So come on into the church and see what this looks like right now. Um, things are marked in white, so it's very clear and hard to miss six foot positions all the way down the aisle and pews that are roped off so that we continue the social distancing that is required of us. As I mentioned, ushers will bring you in and they will seat you. Uh, we'll start at the front of the church and seat all the way here to the back pew. You'll notice that there are side areas of the church where no one will be sitting. That's simply because between masses as we need to clean, those give us large areas we don't need to worry about sanitizing before the next mass comes in. So you'll come on in 
we will have mass. We've been asked to keep mass between 30 and 40 minutes, again, to limit exposure in a, in, in a crowded group. And we will try to do that as best we can while doing justice to the liturgy and praying well together. Uh, some of the singing things that you're used to singing, like the Gloria, we probably will not be doing. We'll be speaking parts of the Mass that usually on a Sunday we would be singing. Many of the practices we had before we went into quarantine will be continued. There'll be no holding hands during the Our Father, no shaking hands during the sign of peace, and those kinds of things. Uh, there'll be no entrance procession or recessional procession. Rather, the priest will come directly out of the um, sacristy and move to the altar and celebrate the Mass. The nice part is the priest does not have to wear a mask while celebrating a Mass because we are far enough away. I didn't mention everyone who does come to church, you are required to wear a mask, and if you could bring your own hand sanitizer, that would be greatly helpful too. The only time the priest will wear a mask is when he comes down to this position to distribute communion to you. At that time, he will put on a mask, and the ushers will bring you forward one pew at a time to make sure that social distancing is maintained. You'll come forward, much as like we're doing at Seton, to receive the Eucharist, and then once you receive it, you'll step to the side, remove your mask, and, and place it in your mouth. If you wish to receive on the tongue, that option is, of course, available to you. Uh, the bishop is asked uh, or prefers that people not do that at this time because if we happen to touch your tongue, we would have to put down the host, return to the sacristy to wash our hands with soap and water before coming back out. But that is an option that you have under canon law that we will respect. After we've all returned to the pews, there'll be the final prayer after, after communion. There'll be the announcements, and then you'll be dismissed, again, a pew at a time, and you'll be asked to please leave by the side doors. The ushers will guide you to the side doors out by the restrooms. This is so that you do not cross the line of people who may be gathering outside in the front of the church for the next mass. We want to limit exposure to each other. Um, unfortunately, what that means is there's no kind of gathering after mass, no time to hang around in the vestibule and visit. That part of our being community together, we cannot do yet. Um, I have been asked also to mention to you that for those who are vulnerable, who are 65 or older, the diocesan guidelines suggest that you not come at this time. Again, the dispensation's place. There's no sin, no requirement, and no expectation that you come. However, you're also adults, I'll let you make that choice for yourself. There will not be a collection during the mass. Again, that sort of passing, getting near each other. But rather, if you'd like to support the parish, much as we're doing with walk-through communion at Seton, there will be baskets at the exits as you leave. So that's sort of the plan for Sunday Masses, again, at 8, 10, and 12. We're also going to try to have daily Masses this coming week, Monday through Saturday. Uh, for those of you who come to daily Mass, there's usually less than 100 people for that, so there should not be a problem getting everyone in. You will not have to make a reservation for daily Mass. And we're really going to rely on the goodwill of those of you who come to daily Mass, 8.30 in the morning, to sort of self-monitor, to um, sit in the places where you should be sitting, not get too close. Again, couples can sit together, families that have been quarantined together can sit together, but we'll be very careful with that sort of thing. Our sacristan, the presiding priest, will be sure to give instructions to make sure that we are keeping uh, all the requirements that we need to keep so that we can continue to gather in the church as we are able. I just want to point out, if you look at the pews, you will notice that there are pews roped off. We don't want to use those pews. And there are white tape marks on the pews. These white tape marks indicate six-foot distances, social distance, in which you can sit if you're singles or couples or whatever that is. So that's sort of the code that we're using. Again, right now everything is white and bright so that everybody can uh, easily identify where we need to be and what we need to do. The situation is not ideal. I've been sharing with people, I read an article this morning that about 67% of churches across the country that could reopen haven't reopened because this sort of thing can be extremely uncomfortable and very difficult. I admit it's not ideal. I'm not a big fan of it, but I do want to facilitate the opportunity for those of you who would like to come to Mass and pray at Mass to do so. So this is what we need to do and we will make the best of it. Um, fortunately, I know we are a people of prayer, and our prayer has seen us through three pretty difficult months, and will see us through this difficult time as well. Um, God understands where we're at, and what we need to do, and what we have to deal with. Uh, we miss you all. Hope to see some of you this Sunday. 
If not, as always, we will be webcasting as we have for the last 12 weeks and we'll continue to do so as long as possible. God bless you. We'll see you soon.